Should be here. Um, <laughs> so these types of solutions um, in facilities like this. Um, things are a little more technical than they used to be, as I'm sure you guys have seen. Now everything's got there's a lot more to that now. So some of this might be overkill, but I figured give you all of it and you can pare down from there from whatever you're gonna mm -hmm. use. All right, so these are the topics we're going to cover. So LF Connect overview. So LFConnect.com is the hub of everything. Um, have you guys, has anybody signed up for a manager account? No, I would like to, though. Okay. You can sign up for a manager account. You'll add one SKU, and anything that's connected to the Internet, it'll pick up. Okay. And that's how you can manage everything. So we'll get into all the details of that. Um, I actually switched the order to the, so we're going to go into Exerciser first and then Facility. So here's your whole digital platform. You've got the Discover Councils that you guys have out there. You've got the LF Connect uh, mobile app. So we're going to focus on that. Cool. So two functions on LFConnect.com. There is the facility side, or at least that's what we call it, which is, is your management of it, managing the equipment, the behind the scenes. And then we have the exerciser side, which would be for the students to log workouts, for you guys to share workouts with them and you can go and double check that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. So we'll go into Exerciser first. We're gonna go through six different sections of it. We're literally gonna go item by item. Um, so a lot of this sign up on this process, because we get a lot of people where they're like, all right, I bought this, and they turn around and come back to us, and they're like, well, they're not using it. That's where you guys come in. We kind of need you guys to enforce the use of it, help them get signed up, show them how to use it, and then from there, as long as you keep enforcing it, it'll go. Um, we can build it, we can improve <coughs> it, but we can't make them use it unless you guys help us. Okay. Whether it's facility or exercise, you go to elfconnect.com, same website, both hit login. You'll log in, you'll land on this page. When we get to the facility side, I'll show you how you switch between the two. So I actually, my account is both an exerciser and a facility manager, which we'll see once we get to the facility side. So the reason I highlight the profile section under there is because there's some vital details in there. So underneath there, you can have them upload email address, user ID, picture. The picture does help because once we get into groups, you'll see that it's just much easier to kind of flip through and you see actual images of the students rather than just an outline of a generic avatar. And then we go down to workout information. So it's kind of hard to see, but there are various workout metrics. So you've got your weight in here, your height, your BMI. Um, so you can have the students go in here and enter this, um, whether you want to use it or not. As an administrator, can I enter that? Um, I don't believe you can do it for them. Okay. Unless you had, I mean, you could go in and manually log into each account if you wanted. Okay. So if you had their username and password, technically, yes. Um, personal information. So it's kind of hard to see, but this page is probably the most important page. So because of our friends in our legal department, users have to opt in to share their information with other people on the site. So in order to create groups where you can send workouts to each other and see what they're doing, see their results, they have to go in under profile under my shared info and check the boxes that allows you to search for them and view their information and share stuff with them. So you can thank our legal department for that one. And then we go into apps. So I noticed, Mike, that you're wearing a Fitbit. Correct. So um, we have Fitbit and Jawbone are the two wearables that we connect with. So the app that Michelle will go through a little bit later, um, both in the app and the website, you can sync up your LF Connect account with your Fitbit or Jawbone account benefits of that. So literally, if I hit connect there, it would prompt me to log in with my Jawbone credentials. I would log in with them. It would sync the two accounts. So now if I log in on one of your bikes and my arm is not moving, at the end of that workout, that information still gets shared with your wearable. It'll go straight to Fitbit or Jawbone, even though your arm wasn't moving. So you still get credit for the workout. 
Um, we also sync up on this back end with MyFitnessPal, um, Apple Health, Google Fit, and Samsung S Health. Uh, those are a little bit different. Obviously, they're not wearables. Those still just share the workout data back and forth. So if for whatever reason someone's tracking through those, they could still send the workout data and have it all in one place. So not to go too far into it, but we have an open platform. This is what we were talking about the other day, Michelle. Developers can build apps that work with our equipment. We have an open platform that allows them to do that. Um, we don't want to shut anything down because everybody has their own thing. They have their own wearables, their own apps, whatever they want to use. If somebody's willing to do the work to work with our equipment, we're all for it. Cool. All right, so favorites. Now this section, I don't know how much the students will actually use, but I'll show it to you anyway. Language, I imagine they're all gonna choose English. We do have 21 languages in case anyone wants to use some other ones. We even have Welsh, um, which I have never seen on anything other than our council. <laughs> there was a special request for a deal on that one. <coughs> Um, they might use this one, so display settings. The data at the top of the console shows your time, your calories, whatever it is. If there's some stat you do or don't want to see, the exerciser can come in here, so the student can come in here and customize which ones they see, so when they log in, it defaults to whatever their choice was. So some people hate seeing time remaining. You can manually shut it off every time you get on. I'll tend to do that myself. but. If you really don't want to do the extra stuff, you can just go here, do it once, and never see it again. And then we have internet favorites, which I did see you guys do have the internet browsers on there. So under the um, My Internet, which is that second tab you see there, when you log in, if the student goes to the internet browser, they can have a tab with their own internet favorites. Well, okay, I have a question about this. Yeah. This is what we were talking about yesterday. Yeah, we noticed Nine. this yesterday. There's a couple pieces of cardio that does not have internet access. So the ellipticals mm. and the bikes it, it, didn't it. have the internet icon They're all like down up. there on the left. Okay. All the other ones had that internet icon and then the other ones just started with the, uh, the phone one that's just to the Okay, right. so if they're not showing it, they're probably having a connectivity issue because that icon will disappear oh, okay. if it doesn't have internet. So, so that means we have an issue going on with Yeah, there might be connection. a connection issue. We can look at it. Okay, cool. Yeah, but that's a good indicator if you ever walk by and you see it not there. So it should it should be there. there. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. And one good thing, we'll get into it, um, which I'm not sure if we go into it or not on the facility side. I think we do. But on the internet side, especially being a school, you guys can lock down what sites they can get to. So you can put Google safe search on there. Mm -hmm. Or you can limit it, and we'll get into this, but you can limit it to just your links. Um, so if you have 12, it's, you have to put 12 sites in there. You could put 12 in there and they could only go to those if there are links within those sites. So say, just as an example, you send them to, I don't know, yahoo.com. They can click on any of the links within Yahoo and still get to those. We can't lock that down, but you can keep it a little bit more safe this way, gotcha. especially in the school. Yeah. Yes. So my workout. So we're going to go a little out of order here. It'll make sense, though, as we go. So workout library. This is where all my workouts live. So you've got the little icon that shows which piece of cardio it is. So I've got a power mill there, a cross trainer, a tread. So you've got, I think you guys have almost the whole line other than recumbent. I don't think any recumbent, which would make sense given the demographic. Yeah, we don't. We do not have a recumbent. Yeah, but you've got everything, everything else, else, which is much. awesome. Um, so you have little icons for each of those. This is kind of where everything is stored and sits. We'll get back to that in a little bit. So light fitness workouts. So on here, we've kind of got your standard workouts, your classic workouts, your hill, your manual. And you can go in and create workouts. It's kind of hard to see, but that says time, distance, calories, pace. What's the last one? Oh, distance, climb. And on here, you can set the time and the level that you want, and you can name that workout. Oh. So the student can do this. And the same for you guys, so you guys would also create elfconnect.com exerciser profiles, just as a student would. And you can both create work and share the different workouts. So that is the kind of classic workouts that you'll typically use. On here though, we've got custom interval workouts, which given the popularity of HIT, high intensity interval training, everybody's gonna wanna use this. Um, you can do a speed interval or a heart rate interval. I don't imagine you guys would probably be using heart rate intervals. 
um, probably more for like a cardiac type <laughs> rehab section. Um, but we've got speed intervals. So you can go in there and you can set every speed interval at what you want. So this is actually a way that the only way that you'll get a treadmill or a power mill to have the speed auto adjust for you. So I caution it just because you can be on there and the speed will change on the student. Um, but that might be the effect that you need. So you can see here, I made a 30 some different interval, 30 second intervals, two speeds. You can make as many as you want. And then on here, our workout calendar. So on here you can schedule workouts. You can actually add them to a calendar. Um, I did notice playing this with myself, not the best thing in the world, I will be honest with you, um, as far as scheduling them. The Google Calendar link did not work anymore. Google must have updated something, so it didn't work anymore. But the iCal did. So if I went through there, I can schedule a workout. I export that to a calendar. I opened it up on my, on my phone. This was literally a screenshot from my phone. I opened it up, added it to my calendar, and then it appeared at the top on that date. So I will be totally transparent on the fact that it's a little funky, um, but it can work if you play with it. So my results, track progress. Got nice little graphs that everybody always wants to see. And you can change the date range, you can look at a week, you can look at a year, um, and you can hover over each bar on your computer to see um, what the workout details were of it. And then down below, which is kind of hard to see, but you can change what you're viewing on that chart. You can view distance, you can view calories, you can view time. Can we move that up closer? Will that uh, brighten up the fine. audience? We can try. There. You want to move an awful speaker? And you guys can go and play on this right after. Um, I'll just keep pointing out what it is. But you've got all the different metrics, so you can chart by different things. You're not stuck just to time. Okay. And then when you do first log in, you'll get stats on your last workout, and then that what I've got in that blue square in the lower left is just another way to get to track progress, because that's typically what people are telling you to do. The USB upload, um, I don't even go through on here, but I'll just mention it was when it's kind of a historical thing of the equipment that we used to have when it wasn't connected to the internet. You would have to create a workout, download it to a USB, and then go plug it into the cardio machine. Obviously, you guys got connectivity. We wouldn't even worry about it. <laughs> and then we have manual entry. So if for whatever reason they forgot to log in, they didn't save it, they can go in here and manually enter a cardio workout or a strength workout. So my community, this is where groups come in. So on the left, um, hard to see there, but I got two different groups there. And you can create groups, and this is where that sharing, those check boxes of sharing your profile, being able to have people search you and find you, that's where this comes in. So you're not gonna be able to add them to a group or see them at all. So what's shown kind of in the middle there is everybody's recent stuff. Everybody in the group, their recent workouts. So like Classes, phys ed classes, would be able to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'd be able to create. You could create one like for the girls' basketball team that was just in here. Okay. You could create one from there, add all those girls in there, and then you can kind of sort by those. That's pretty cool. Yep. So you got view performance. So you click on that, and of that group, you'd see all those past workouts. You can export it if you want to play with the data at all. Hmm. You can change what you view by. So you can view by. So you've got calories, time, distance average speed, average heart rate, pace, distance, climb, and then fit test score, if I don't worry about, but you can play with that and you can play with date ranges too. You can send them messages, so you can send an individual message or you can send the whole group a message. And then you can also send a workout. So on here, just like you would have created the workout earlier in that workout library, be that the interval or one of the light fitness workouts that you've modified, you can create one of those and share it with the group or an individual. 
So if I'm on there as a coach and I send a workout to every team member, yep, every athlete, and, you know, they, that, that's really cool. I mean, so they have to, I could say they have to complete it by Wednesday, whatever the workout is. Yeah, you could put a note in there when you send it to them that says, do this by Wednesday. Cool. Send it out, and then you can go back on Thursday and see if they did it on Wednesday. Okay. So as long as they have the Elf Connect app, they log yes. into the council, it's been tracked, which they could do the manual entry, but then they could lie. So. No, that's true. <laughs> I can log in. You won't tell them that person. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. They're the best. Buddy invitations. So as you are connecting with people, so everyone that you're going to have in a group, you're going to have to connect with as a buddy, just like you would on Facebook. Same deal. And then messages. This is just where you have your message center. And all of these things, when you get a new buddy invite, a new message, you get an email that just lets you know, and then you log in and take a look at it. So how do they actually work out? They take the Elf Connect app. There's a, the easiest way is to do the QR code scanner, which is in the app. You'll scan that QR code in the lower right, and then you're able to log in. So where will those workouts appear? Whether they created a workout or you guys created one and sent it to them when they log in, on workouts, the My Workouts tab will appear, and all of those workouts are there. So if it's the Wednesday workout, you might want to specify the date on it so they know, oop, today I'm supposed to be doing that but they can log right in and it's right there. They just have to push it and then hit go. So any questions on the exerciser side before we go to the facility side? All right. Yeah, it's, it's one of those where once you get in there and you start playing with it, and you can kind of all sign up and start practicing sending each other workouts just to make sure that you get it and you're knowing which, like, okay, when I go in the council, now I see it here. That's how this workout works. So only the manager account can send one out? Nope, everybody. So the, both all of your accounts as well as the students would be the exact same types of accounts. So they'll be able, they could send you guys work out if they really wanted to. <laughs> I doubt they'll take the time to do it, but they could. So the facility side, so this is more of the management side of the equipment. We got six sections on here. So same thing, elfconnect.com. You log in, does not matter which one. So now you'll see in the upper left, we have a facility and an exerciser tab. So I mentioned earlier that I have both. And if you have both, actually under your profile, you can link the two. You would tab between these two if you've got both accounts. So obviously we're focused on the facility side. So the box I just highlighted shows the current software version on your equipment. This is important because as things get improved upon or things get fixed, we'll send out software updates, which we'll get into how to update that in a second. And then down here in this square is a quick kind of glance at what is being used in your gym. So what's the most used product just at a glance? Uh, what's the peak day? So which day of the week are the kids in here the most? And what time are they typically in here? So that kind of just gives you a quick little snapshot. How to training videos. Um, some of, I mean, they're all very relevant. Some of them are a little bit outdated because the navigation at the top in that gray bar actually just got updated. Not like, I think about a week or two ago. So mm -hmm. it looks like this now though, but the how to videos, it'll look a little bit different, but generally the same. So this is the home page of the facility. Yep. Yeah, okay. yeah exactly summarize the usage data for you. So kind of like that first snapshot on the home page that summarized your peak uh, hours and your peak day, you can just get a monthly email that summarizes it. <coughs> and if you click into it, you can dig deeper. So you can go and look at e each individual piece of equipment. So maybe, just an example, maybe the power mill on the left gets used all the time because it's by the door and the one on the right doesn't. Swap them. Yep. Save the life. Yep. Cool. So this is just showing we click through bikes, now I'm seeing a chart just by individual bike. So customize. So the attract screen customization. You've got all those screens on there. I like to call them billboards. Because it's your own personal billboard. So 
So on here, you can put up to three images to slideshow through that equipment um, and change them as often as you would like. So what's nice here is you'll upload your images, the parameters of the sizes and the format and everything are listed in here. But you'll add them in there, you'll choose which ones, and then you'll create a slideshow. So you knew that's where they got. We had that one club that I mentioned, they paid for all of their gym wipes just based on selling wow. the ad space. Wow. Yeah. So that's why I call it the billboard, because it's, it's one of those, you can put whatever wow. message you want out there, community events, anything. Uh, custom workouts. So this is another way you guys can get workouts under the equipment. This one doesn't require login. It can come for anybody. So you can go on here and create workouts and change up what workouts are shown just on the standard workout screen. I don't know if I go into that one. Okay, so I don't dig deep into that one. But somewhat similar to the exerciser side where you'll be able to create a workout, put it on there. And maybe you do it that way, whether you want to maybe Maybe you're not going to have a log in, or maybe just to start, you create like, all right, here's Wednesday's football team workout. And you can throw that down there. It's on all the equipment. Or you can choose to only put it on certain pieces of equipment. Right. So I always like to put that in the fact that if you think back, think back to the old weight rooms that um, you would buy that equipment, and those workouts were on there for the life of the equipment, and that's all you had. You had your right. hill, you had your random, you had your oh. manual. It doesn't have to stay the same. Right. For example, we have these bike programs I have where it's just on an Excel sheet. I print out and a little okay. cardboard thing. And I give it to certain individuals that need to do more cardio. Okay. I could customize it and just have it on the screen. I wouldn't have to hand them a card anymore. No, I mean, depending on what it is, you should be able to go in here and probably recreate whatever you're doing. Awesome. And I can cut it to where it's only for the bikes. Yep. You specify it by base type. Very cool. All right, and then media, I know you guys don't have TV connectivity, so most of this is irrelevant to you. But this is just showing that you can manage your TV channels on here, you can name them. And then, oh, this is internet settings. So this is where I was talking about how you can customize. So the exerciser can have their own favorite links if you want. But there are spots for 12 links when you first hit the internet browser that you guys can customize. So if you want to put um, game schedules, things like that, you can put those links on there. It'll be the first thing they see when the internet browser comes up. All right, and then product settings. Is that where you also can block websites? Um, well, actually, we're coming up on that one. Oh. Uh, so product settings, you'll create the name of a product setting and then you'll go in and specify what's included in there. So obviously you're probably not gonna mess with language or metric versus material settings. But we have connectivity in here. So this is actually where, this is where you've got level of internet access. So you can set it to full browsing, manager links only, which is where those 12 links come in. Um, or you can say none, you can just say you can't do anything. Um, and then you can also have Google Safe Search turned on as well. And my understanding of the networking is that whatever filtering you guys have on your internet, kind of on the computers that the students use, if it's the same network, it should filter the same way. Uh, workout options. This is where you can make um, all your different settings, like for example, on a tread, you can change the max speed. If for whatever reason you don't want the kids going that fast, you can turn that on. You can also change the minimum speed on the other side, where it starts off at 0 0.5, which is extremely slow. Mm. You could have it always start at maybe two miles an hour. This is an example. The old man finally showed up. solitaire on and off <laughs> in case you really want to. <laughs> uh, we also have Flipboard on there which is a news app. Um, I don't know how much the kids would actually use that. Um, and then we have the third party apps which we'll get into in a second that you can turn on or off. There's really not much of a reason to turn them off um, but I'll talk about those a little bit later. Uh, 
And then down here, this is power settings. So if you want things to save a little bit of power, but I wouldn't worry too much about it. So software updates. So in here, you've got your remote updates. And auto update is turned on. This means that anytime we push out a software release, it's going to update the software on any connected equipment. Don't really have to think about it. We recommend just turning it on because then you don't have to worry about it. If for whatever reason you don't want to, you can shut it off and then when there is a software update, you would just manually do it or you could schedule it. We typically try and do it at off hours, so it's typically done overnight. Um, no guarantees on that, but more often than not, it's just done at night. So you might not even notice it happens. And then this is just, just a scroll down on that. This is pending updates. So this is an example of, for whatever reason, actually a perfect example. So the ones that don't have internet browser that might not have connectivity, for what, they obviously couldn't get the software update. They're not connected to the internet. This area, just lower on that software page, will show you which ones maybe we tried to update and couldn't for whatever reason. So you can kind of check in them to make sure, all right, is anything wrong? And then don't worry about LifeScape course updates. And then, oh, the far right is download software. So you guys are connected, so you really only have to worry about remote updates. The manual updates is if you didn't have connected equipment, you would have to manually download it to a USB stick and then go to each piece of equipment and update it. So you're connected, don't worry about it. Cool. All right, we're almost through all of it. So the facility side, this is where you guys would obviously add, you would have the first facility that you would create when you register, and I don't think you guys would have to add one from there, so I'm not gonna probably use that one too much. So members, this is where you can create accounts for the kids if you want to. Um, I will kind of caution it in both directions. So you can either come in here and kind of do a bulk upload and upload a file that allows you to add all of the students and create accounts for them, which is what this is showing. You'll download a file off of here. I think it's just an Excel doc. You will put their info in, and then it will send them an email. So it's nice, because, and it'll generate some random password for them to use, and then they can obviously go in and change it later. The only reason I caution doing it is a lot of the kids will probably just throw that email out. Because mm -hmm. if you sign up for it, you're expecting the email. You don't delete it. You know it's there. If you didn't sign up for it, if you do it for them, they might just talk the email out. They might not think twice about it. They'll see something from LF Connect, not know what the hell it is, and delete it. So You'd have to warn them. Exactly. You'd have to warn them, or you sit down and you just you make it a requirement for them to go in and create their account. And then maybe what you do is you make it a requirement for them to go sign up, check those check boxes to share their info, and then send you a buddy request. And that way you can confirm that they did it. And that way, they went in, they created their own username, their own password, they're familiar with it. So you can kind of go both ways. Okay. And that's just showing the bulk upload there. And then mobile app. So this is new. So we have our Elf Connect app uh, that works with all this, works with all the equipment, is completely complimentary. And we now have an offering that is a custom facility app. Um, where you can put your own branding on it. So it's just a custom facility app. So this is an app that could have your logos, your colors, your name on it, and has a little bit more features on it. So it has challenges, it has rewards. It is tailored a little bit more to a facility club environment, um, but it can kind of work for anybody. So this one is the additional fee. That's why we've got the phone number where to call and this gentleman over here you would talk to, who would probably then call me and talk to me. <laughs> um, but this is just another offering that we have that's actually very new. Um, we partnered with a company um, that creates um, an app like this, so they have additional features that we don't have in our Alice Connect app that it's much easier to have someone else who does that all the time build those features in while we focus on equipment is the main thing. And then on to integration. So like I mentioned earlier, the wearables, Apple Health, MyFitnessPal, all of those work on the back end. So they can 
whether it's you guys or the students, can sync those up on lfconnect.com's exerciser side or on the LF Connect app. There are additional ones. So you guys have the micro Apple or Android micro USB and the Apple 30 pin cables, the dongles is what we call them hanging off all the equipment. Yeah, I was going to ask about those. Yes. So, you have the updated, uh, for um, so we're actually moving in the direction of removing them all together because we don't want to have, we don't want to be stuck to whatever Apple feels like Shit. doing today. They change it all. Yeah. Because everybody asks for, oh, well, put lightning on there. Put the Apple lightning on there. And we're like, yeah, but it's in a month. Because right when we launched this equipment, I wasn't at the company, but right when this launched, that's when Apple changed it. So will it be yeah. Bluetooth connectivity? So Bluetooth is in here standard. So thankfully my predecessors were smart enough Bluetooth? to put Bluetooth well, everybody in can do it. It's, just, I don't it's know wireless what connectivity. Yep. Well, I know what Bluetooth is. I don't know what Lightning is. So, Lightning's the charger for Apple, uh, the uh, newer one. I'm not Apple at all. <laughs> well, you don't need to, then your phone will work with it because it's a mic, the Absolutely. Android micro USB. That's not going to change. Or I don't see it changing in the foreseeable future. But we do have retrofit <laughs> kit options to pull those cables off and just close out those holes if you do need it. Um, so if you do want to use those, there is a set of apps that Michelle will actually show that little promo area on there um, that work with those cables. So like I mentioned earlier, we have an open platform so any developers can work, can do the work to work with our equipment. And there's a couple like uh, Runtastic is on there, uh, Lose It, there's a whole slew of different um, fitness apps that work over the cables. So basically you plug the phone in, you could open your Runtastic app and be syncing your workout data from our equipment to that app. Um, obviously, as we move away from the cables, we're pushing those developers to move things over to Bluetooth, um, so perfect segue. Um, most of them have not done the work yet. The only one that has is Run Social, which used to be called Powfit, which is actually a really cool app. Um, it's an iPad app right now only. You can you just have to plug in. But now you can scan a QR code to sync over Bluetooth, and you actually have an avatar that's running through a landscape, and you can race other people from around the world. That's the one. Yeah. That's so, only Apple? Uh, right now it's only Apple. You're missing out on the Apple world. No. <laughs> They're all laughing. I hate Apple. I was just talking with somebody about that yesterday. Well, we work with both. So LF Open is that platform that I mentioned, and then obviously data is shared automatically with Sync wearables. So any questions on that? I've got one little video that I want to send back. You can obviously reach out to Tom or myself, and we can help you out. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm okay. I mean, it's very thorough. Yeah, I mean, it seems like a lot. Once you get in there and start playing with it, you figure it out. Just like any software. I'm going to pull up one video of a newer offering that you guys already have and you didn't even know. You didn't have to buy it. Now, do I have audio? Should be on the speakers. Dude, what do you know how to work this? I don't like PCs. Yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Oh, is it my volume that's down? On the laptop? It is?
All right, so this is LF Connect Protect. So this is a new service that we're offering for US only. Unfortunately, you guys are in the US, so you get it. <laughs> um, it is something that is just provided with the purchase of the equipment. It is our service group's initiative to help you guys keep your equipment up and running. So they have certain um, codes that will kind of ping them to let them know if there's an issue with your equipment. They've got certain codes, they're trying to build out what it, uh, what it includes, so right now it's just some basic ones. So for example, if one of the pieces of your equipment, the internet goes down and they notice it's been a while, it's still not connected, they can go in and try and diagnose it themselves and maybe fix it without you guys having to do anything. Or they might call you and say, hey, there's an issue on the equipment, would you like us to send a tech out to take a look at it? So without you guys having to do anything, somebody's monitoring your equipment if there's any problems. So I'm just to show you a quick little promo video. <laughs> We thought we had a great opportunity to leverage technology of the Internet of Things to really differentiate right. ourselves in the marketplace and take our service from a reactive uh, technical support organization to a proactive predictive organization. I get an error message or even a slight notification of a problem and I'm able to remote to it, isolate the problem to the exact issue. We'll analyze the message and we'll pull up that serial number, take a look at the different logs, look at how many times the errors came in to see if it's maybe just a one-off or if it's something that we actually have to address. We identify problems before they become problems. When there's an alert, uh, they investigate that alert behind the scenes. They'll try to initiate some troubleshooting remotely. In the event that that's not successful, they take the next step and that's reaching out to the customer proactively. Have an LF Connect tech services makes my life easier. First time I heard about tech services is uh, I was contacted by a technician from Life Fitness. Next day I know a serviceman was showing up at our doorstep knowing that, hey, I have a task for this machine, this fear of work, and I say, I just found out. So that's, that was fantastic. Marty came in and said, Mike, you can't believe this, that somebody went ahead and contacted me before it was really something going wrong with the machine. So I was kind of, wow, man, and the guy was out within 24 hours to fix it. Uh, I think this is going to be very beneficial to customers. I think customers are going to be extremely pleased when they find out that we can tell that the machine may or may not be having an issue even before their members would let them know that they're having an issue. What our customers could expect is peace of mind. They'll know that behind the scenes, after sale, we're proactively monitoring their product, <coughs> determining whether or not they have any issue with their product, assessing the health of the product so that we can support them from a proactive perspective. I think the support team is fantastic. Man. Very good interaction with them. They communicate well with me. They do a real good job. They help me out a lot. It gives me a peace of mind when the equipment goes down. That light fitness is gonna get a hold of me. It makes me feel good to know that the machine is working after um, I service it, and you know, customers can do it. Implementing this technology has really revolutionized the way we support our customers. Working together, we've been able to really develop this technology. And we're really looking forward to the future and how we're gonna leverage it to really make a difference. I wanted to share that with you guys just because it is fairly new and okay. you had it and you didn't even know it. Right. Um, <laughs> so that's usability, saying the function of the machine, I could say the treadmill, the, the belts off or whatever. Or is it also the technology of it? If like we're having that connectivity issue on it, will they, somebody knows that without us? Yeah, so right now it's, it's kind of limited to a couple different things that they can look into. They're trying to keep building it out, but the connectivity is a perfect example of one where if you've got a piece of equipment that's down for a decent period of time, they'll get an alert. They can go in and try and diagnose it. Give you a call and say, hey, we noticed this was down. Maybe give you some instructions or ask if you want a tech sent out. Okay. So things like this that um, I'm proud that we've done. Because yeah, there's cool. other things like bells and whistles and flashy stuff is, is cool and great, but um, it doesn't have longevity because it doesn't have much use. Stuff like this makes sense it makes life easier yeah and my other question is they know who to contact say you said that if they from distance saw there was something wrong with the machine they'll they might just be able to fix it over the phone they would pick up and call me so Since tom and i i went through tom to buy this stuff or who would they call so it may go back to the order and see who it was connected to or you can um you actually have to register the equipment and you'll put in um, a name in there. So you could also put it in there as well. Understood. And they'll know who to contact them. And they can also see who the managers are on the account. So they'll be able to look at that. 
Okay. Make sure you register that equipment. You're the uh, DOC on that account, so you're the point yeah. of contact. Yeah. Okay. So it should be you. Fly. The POC. Okay. Sounds really <laughs> important to <laughs> you. <laughs> He said it's the eldest daughter. <laughs> but that's it. Let's go, you little lone soldier. Come on. So proud of that. We're not film that. <laughs> On the equipment. And so basically, by logging in, all we do is scan the code here, and then it's logging us in to the equipment. So it's going to show all of our workouts that Diane just went through. Um, so all the this shared one. workouts will come, okay, will come um, show up here. So I do suggest that all the uh, students and the athletes, um, you know, get their LF Connect code um, and be connected on here so that they can just scan in and then automatically will pop up the workouts. Um, so say they forgot their phone, but they just made yes. it in there? Yeah, that okay. is, um, they can absolutely do that. Um, so we can log in. So what she's doing for us right now, I would like for you to be able to do this for some of our teachers, whoever would need them, or not as in depth as she's talking about, but to, to a degree at least. Okay, so and if they forget their password, um, they can go to forget password, and there's a four-digit passcode. So for some reason, it's not working. But it'll send an email just like that, and then just like anything, if they forget their password, it'll send. But um, so once we're scanned in, all the workouts appear. And so here we have all the uh, pre-settings for the internet. So everything that you decide to have up on here, um, otherwise, we can just go into Google and start, you know, typing and you know, whatnot. So to minimize, uh, we just hit the, the arrow to come down and to restore, to go back. Um, and so we have the uh, icons here that we can tap into or you can just swipe. Solitaire. So mobile apps here is where we can connect um, and sync up. So Fitbit, things like that, or any app that you're on. Um, my fitness pal will probably be one of the most popular. And to sync it up, you have to do it on the screen, not on your phone? Uh, you can do them either, either way. So on the phone, under settings, it'll come up um, right under here, and then we could sync, you would connect through the phone. It would probably be even easier just to do it on the phone, actually. Okay. Yeah. And then it go, you can go ahead and enter your info. Your, And I'll go back to um, the phone in a bit. 
but so mobile. So all your workouts come up here, your Lightscape courses, which I think that they, they add one new course every month. And the least popular one gets dropped. So Life Fitness is able to track which ones get, get used the most and then they, they add a new one um, every month. And then this is just, yeah, Bluetooth connectivity for your, you know, headphones and um, Fitbits and things like that. So this is really straightforward. Um, and then on the phone, we have, I'll just run through it real quick. So results, all of your results are on the phone here for the week, the month, and the year. And when you um, actually do the workout, you when you scan at the end or in the beginning, if you're logged in, it'll automatically save your workouts. And at the end, um, say you're not logged in, you can still, it'll say, do you want to save this workout? And then you say yes and you scan it. So either way, it'll, it'll record your results and that will end up in your results um, on, the, on the app. So all the workouts are under here. You can manually input them, and then the, the workouts that you create will be under here as well. There's also an outdoor GPS, which might be nice for you know some of the athletes that are running outside. I don't know if you have some of the players and teams run outside and, and things like that, but they can actually record um, how long they ran and their pace. And so they could, that can all be added into- Elevation you know, the, and everything. Actually, elevation, Right now we just have time, calories, and pace for walking, running, and um, biking. But we don't, have, we don't have elevation and things like that. But um, it's, a, it's a good way to you know, track you know, and, and add it to the existing workout so you know, the coaches can see what they're, right. what they're doing. You know what I mean? They, it's all five, so you can see everything that they're doing outside of you know, outside of uh, practice and, and things like that. Uh, okay. Is there a way of tracking, say, beautiful day out, you went out on, on a run and you were going a certain uh, miles per hour or running uh -huh. bike or whatever, the next day it's raining out, you don't want to go outside. Can you link up and do that same workout? Will it track that way? Will it know what you did the day before outside? Yes, all the workouts will be saved. Okay. So you could go back and, and look into it and then, oh, okay. yes, cool. yeah. So that's a nice right. function. Um, LF codes, some of the equipment also might have QR codes to show the, uh, to show how to use the equipment. I'm not sure if your, yours has QR codes on them. Let me check real quick. And, But you could get that put on in case you wanted that option. That would be, yes. You ask Tom about it, but um, it's kind of nice because it shows it shows how to use it. It, it. It's an actual demo. So some, you know, people don't know how to use pieces of equipment. And even if there's like, you know, um, like, I don't know if you have like gym monitors and things like that. Um, like, like QR. yeah, <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so in case no one's around, they don't know how to use a piece of equipment, then it shows them how to do it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. And then there's also a tour on the app to show, um, you know, step by step everything that we're talking about today. So if you're on here and you're like, oh, how do I, you know, manually put a workout in or this and that, you can you can actually take the tour on the app. So when they download the app, mm -hmm. they before they use it, they can find out how to use it basically. Oh, yeah. not just only to sync up and yes. there. So they actually kind of like play by play on there? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very user friendly. So again, settings is, you know, that's all your outdoor GPS stuff, your your workouts on the, on the equipment, and all of your um, Fitbit, you know, app information's all under settings. And then there's a little feedback you know, if there's a bug or something with one of the pieces of equipment or um, you want to provide feedback to Life Fitness, it's, it's there. And then you could just sign out. So this is really, really easy app. Um, Do they need to sign out on their 
before somebody else gets on there? It'll automatically sign out after 60 seconds of when you're when you're done and there's no activity. It'll automatically sign out, and there is a sign out that says, "Would you like to sign out now?" Okay. Or it'll automatically disconnect, sign you out in 60 seconds. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Good question. Now about the workouts thing, I know you can send it from the website. Can you send workouts to do the app as well? Yes. So mm -hmm. if we were wanted to do the same workout, you can send it to like the person next to you. Yeah, you can send it to your buddy. You would have to be a buddy with um with that person. Okay. And then you can send the workout. And your results. So you can send a workout in and, and so your results. Really yeah. It's it's really great. So I definitely can see you guys using this a lot, you know. Yeah, I like the idea. Mm-hmm. I would have everyone do an activity, you know, like sign in to LF Connect and then send you a buddy request or a workout, a, a buddy request and a workout, or send them their the results or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So any other questions? It's pretty straightforward. So every machine, as far as the screen machine, the, the cardio, all the same. What you just showed us works like that on all the pieces. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Cool. And are there any questions on any of the pieces of equipment or anything? It seems like you guys kind of know what you're doing here, but. Um, no, it seems pretty straightforward. Yeah, okay. we're good. Uh, 